Before we get to this video, I just wanted to stop and let you guys know that next weekend, me and the entire Southside crew will be at the Sled Expo 22 at the Big E Young building in uh, Springfield, Mass. Um, it's a big consumer-based uh, expo center, kind of like the Big E show that I did in Syracuse. Um, I've actually never been there. Bruce has been there, so we will all be there. Bruce will have, um, I believe, a couple sleds there, but he's going to have a ton of clothing, so helmets, pants, jackets, gloves, you know, uh, anything that has to do with something that he carries, uh, he's going to have. So we're going to have a pretty big setup there. So I will be there, entire Southside crew, and we're going to have a special guest, uh, Rick from Woody's is also going to be there with us. So uh, if you guys have an open schedule, open calendar, make sure to uh, get over there and come and see us and come and hang out and ask a bunch of questions. Uh, it'll be a good time. I will be there most of the day Saturday. Actually, I have a wedding Friday night, so I don't know exactly when I'm going to get there Saturday morning, but I'm trying to get there as early as I can, and we'll be there Sunday morning also. So uh, just wanted to let you guys know that if you're free and in your and in the area, stop in and check us out. Here's the video, guys. It's a good one. <music> What's going on guys and welcome back. I am up here at Southside Sales and Service. We are getting into snowmobile season. We're getting really close to being into snowmobile season. Um, even though it's what, 73 degrees today or yeah. something like that. And we're in t-shirts, but we are getting close. Sleds are starting to show up. And I got with my buddy Bruce and uh, we're up here to do some videos. So today's video is talking about the rear torsion springs in these, the rear suspension of the, you know, a VR1 or anything of that nature. So last year when we did a video on it, we talked a lot about standard duty, you know, that come on the sleds. We talk about heavy duty and then extra heavy duty. Well, last year they actually came out with a new torsion spring. It's actually, it's another extra heavy duty, but it's actually, it has different characteristics of it. And a lot of people jumped on that and they were really interested in it. So I figured I'd get with Bruce and talk about some options that we have. And we finally have our hands on a set of those new extra heavy duties. And uh, we're going to talk about it today. And we are not in our normal photo booth. No. Nope. No, nope. nope. we are uh, borrowing a stall here. Yeah, this is Rick's area, my gold certified tech. Yeah. He's actually doing some hunting, so we're using his spot. Yes. <laughs> so we have a rear suspension actually out of this VR1 here. And we have all the different springs that you could possibly have. And we're going to talk about what the differences is between, you know, difference is between them and kind of why you would want one or want the other. So Bruce is the specialty here or the know-it-all here, so he's gonna take over. So, Bruce, what do we got? Okay, so I know we talked about this stuff a lot last year. We talked about bumping up to HD springs. That's a very common spring to go up for the aggressive rider. And then the XHDs for the guys that were a little heavier, or if we're putting two up on it, because we, we do, we put two up seats on these, these things all the time now. Um, so now, you know, going at the end of last season, I had heard that because of the two up sled that's coming out, they had built this new spring and it was a low preload high tension spring which is really what we wanted because the xhds is a is a higher um, preload but the same poundage as an hd so it you know it has its spot like it'll if you were using it as a two-up machine not not um, high speed aggressive that kind of stuff it'll hold the vehicle up a little bit higher and that's what you want when you got a two-up rider on it if you but if you got a real heavy rider on it and he's and he's an aggressive rider um, you may not want that extra preload because of rebound effect and right. that kind of thing. And without getting into too much detail, if you don't change the rebound valving in this rear shock, it's just going to pogo. Oh, it's yeah. going to come back yeah. really fast. Yeah, on a VR1, definitely. Yeah, uh, no for sure pressure. on a VR1. And on an XCR, it's still too fast, but it's not as fast as that. So it's just a matter of the this shock here the way it's valved and with the needle and the check valve doesn't work very well. So you have to, when you go to an XCR, it has a check valve in it. So then we can, um, it, it kind of masks the problem a little bit. So it, um, but it's still, when you go to an uh, extra heavy or extra heavy, the rebound is way too, way too quick. Right, and when we talk about rebound, it's how fast it comes back. Mm -hmm. So, but that's a, we've gone into that a million other times and, and uh, you know, we're really here to talk about springs today. So what do we got? Okay, so. We got them all. Yeah, so the sled comes stock, it comes with this, this is a 359. Because 
most of the springs or poundages go by the wire diameters. So in this case, they're square. So uh, we go from 359 to uh, 375. But you, so you go with these, these are uh, 11 pound per degree. So they measure this at pounds per degree. So how many pounds it takes to bend this spring like that. And obviously when these are on here, you have a lot and of leverage. And they're loaded here and they're snapped into here. These go through a lot of change. These are these springs are are really moving a lot. Mm -hmm. So the resilience is important, and that's why sometimes after a while you have to uh, click your click up to a medium or to a high because they get you, yeah they're going to get sacked a little right, bit. Right, sacked out. So right. so these here. So you have your standard. You three, have three fifty nine. Yeah. HD is 375, XHD is 375. Again, it's kind of weird, but we'll go into that. Yeah, we're gonna touch and it. And then this is the new one, which they they just call it a trap spring. So this spring is uh, shaped like a trapezoid and it um, it fits in between each other pretty well when they want right. compared to a I'll square you, spring. Yeah, a square spring. So, and they're strong. They, they started using this on the race sled and it, and it worked well. I mean, obviously we're looking for a lot of a lot of resiliency on that. Mm -hmm. So with that um, with that technology, they started to do it for the two ups, and then I think it'll work well for right. what we're doing. Right. So now that we have them, we're going to move these out of the way so you get this skid to the edge of it, mm -hmm. and then we can show you kind of what we're talking about when we're talking about degrees. Degrees. Yeah. Hmm. So when we put this on here, this is a this degree here is what we're talking about as far as it's in low and then we're going to pull this up and we're going to snap it over the top of that slide so that's how much preload you need to put on that spring for for this degree which is 70 70 degree yeah i believe, I believe that was yeah there's our cheat sheet here yeah and then when you go to an hd the degree is the same but it's 375 square so it's just a bigger wire so, yeah so you go from 11 pounds per degree to 13 pounds per degree. So again, same amount of preload, but 13 pounds per degree because of the heavier wire. Right, and while we have that there, before you take it out, I also, a bunch of questions I got, and this is what I run, this is what you run, this mm -hmm. is what I'd say we'd send 90% of the people to is just a standard heavy duty spring here. And everyone always says, is there a bigger bushing that goes in there? Because this is a bigger diameter where all the wire is. And actually, no, it's not, it's the same one. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the same bushing. We don't have to change it. It, it. I guess it wouldn't be a bad idea when you, because it's sitting there like that. We take this and we preload it. Obviously, this spring is it's pushing like, on one angle. It's pushing on one angle. So I guess you know it might be something we do this winter as we make some up because it would put a little more preload on the spring because now it doesn't have so much movement right. of the spring. Right. So it is something to. So yeah, I just want to touch on that before we move on. So then when we go to an XHD that we had last year. Yeah, these were the standard. Uh, standard Extra. XHD that mm -hmm. we've had and it comes in a kit it's in the book um, this is still 375 <clears throat> same wire as the HD yeah same wire as the HD and it's still the same poundage too it's 13 pounds per degree the difference is is here's your difference of of degree you go that um, right and that's an 80 I think right yeah yeah so you go from 70 degree to 80 degree yeah so you're you're here oh, sorry you're here for preload or when you put the XHD on, you're here before you start winding. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot more pressure to be able to do that. Right, but that just means you're winding that spring up more, which is why it's gonna kick, come back. When it's when it's gonna come back, it's oh, gonna yeah. come back. It's coming out. So now this one here, this one has the same degree as the stock spring does. So again, much less degree uh, preload. Right, so sure. we're gonna put this up, it's much easier. And it's, but it's 14.4 pounds per degree. So, so it's even, actually stiffer. Yeah, so it's stiffer than the XHD. And your difference of these two, when you've looked at these two for here, we'll put the, where the spring blocks would be hitting, we'll put that in place. And there's your difference yeah. in preload of how much you're winding this XHD compared to that new trap spring. Right. So we did a little test, just a static test on the floor here with, with Rick. And um, we had a stalker put a set of XHDs on it, sat him on it. I sat on the back, just seeing how far it went down, how it felt, 
you know, going through the travel, you know, stand, and then I was on the back pushing down with him on, and he weighs, I don't know, he weighs a light 235. Yeah. You know, yeah. He's in his hunting weight now. Plus or, plus or minus. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so then we took it off and we put the XHDs on, and definitely was noticeable. I mean, when you, when we were on it and trying to go through the travel, you could feel that more degree or that more pounds per degree for the anti bottom. But yeah, on the top, it was definitely freer. Mm -hmm. So again, that, you know, if it was somebody riding double and you and you need sled height because it, you do want it to steer with two people on it, that XH, the standard, X, standard XH. XHD kit spring is, might work out better because you're not looking for the performance aspect of it. Uh, you're looking going, strictly for ride through, height going through you know bump 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 like that like we you know a lot of the guys do when they're aggressive riders they're they may be more rolling through this stuff and you just want the sled up more and then you come into the turn and, and the sled will turn better because the tail is up a little higher right and you're putting pressure back on the skis right so whereas that new trap spring it's going to anti-bottom more because yes it is that but as far as that sled height that would be the kind of the only difference where i would say Okay, there's my line. Right. And when, you know, you made up that sheet there, that shock sheet, and everybody fills out really well, that kind of information is real important. You know, I, you know, I'll look at it, and then a lot of times I'll even call a guy and, you know, just kind of run through it with him and as I'm actually doing his set so that it's like right there in my mind, we talked about it, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And then we'll make, and then if it's spring-wise, we're making that decision then too. Right. So. So these, obviously, these new trap springs are obviously new. And the one thing that we learned is they do not come as a package. Nope, they don't. They, they come, come individually. Mm -hmm. So you actually have to order two of them. Right, a left and a right. You have to yep. order a left and a right. And I will put the part numbers here on the screen. Um, we have them. Do we have the boxes for them or no? Um, I just had the, the, the two kit boxes. Just, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, did, I didn't have the boxes for yeah. the trap spring. So I will, uh, I will throw them up there so you guys have that. But that's really... It. So if you guys are an aggressive rider, but you are in that two, oh, you got a little buggy. Mm -hmm. um, it, if you're that, as soon as somebody starts to say they're like 250, and depending on how they're riding, <clears throat> that's when it's like, okay, we should go XHD. Right. And um, I had a lot of people that was that plus that, mm -hmm. you know, and, and this is, you know, the stuff we're doing is going to make a big difference for them. Right. And then, but when you the point of the 13 pound per degree xhd and then that trap spring is going to be <clears throat> you know that's the kind of thing where we make that decision if somebody's if it was really heavy you know they're that 350 whatever okay well we're going to the right we're going right no to question. it right and um but if it's that in between or that two up that's where we kind of split that hair mm -hmm. and then again still deal with as you said change and rebound <clears throat> right and like i said i mean it's you know but we could sit here all day and we could talk about suspension and stuff that you guys should do, but we just wanted to concentrate on, on that. And you guys also know that we do, or I, I can't say I do, Bruce does all internal valving inside these and, and different, uh, we've gone into it a million times. So, yeah. um, you know, if you guys really, really want to get your sled, you know, going good, we well, got to get inside there. But we were just talking about springs and kind of giving you guys direction of, of what, what does what and why are the you know what the differences are between yeah. the two of them because the spring with any vehicle the spring is what holds the vehicle up so the shock doesn't yes does this does this push outward yes when you push in does it come out yes it's gas shock but realistically the spring is what's holding the vehicle up and then the shock is the dampening portion and the rebound portion right. so <clears throat> these the way these are set up there is we're making you know huge changes in that kind of thing for anti-bottoming okay you got the spring it holds it up starts going through the travel quick well now the shock is the thing that's stopping it from blowing through mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so but we could always answer any of those questions guys but like i said we wanted to touch on springs here and we finally got these trap springs in and we wanted to get them up on a on a bench for you guys to see and have bruce kind of go through what's the differences so yep. um i hope that clarifies some of it and again i'll put the the part numbers for those trap springs up because they're kind of tough to find. <laughs> yeah, it's new. It's a new number. Yeah, it's new numbers, so they're kind of <laughs> hard to find. But guys, that's it. That's our uh, tech tip Tuesday on uh, stuff for rear suspensions and springs. So make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.